Hi, okay, here we are again. This is the story of the Arnett Fullen House, which most of which you know, but with the extra ghost in it. So the Arnett Fullen House was built in 1877 by Will Arnett, the son of Anthony Arnett, who built the house up the street, not the guy from Arrested Development. Uh, Anthony Arnett, was one of Boulder's first successful businessmen. His son, Will, liked to show off that he had money. He was Boulder's first trustafarian. So he showed off in a couple of ways. One thing he did, he wore a suit around town. Instead of having gold buttons, it had $10 gold coins on it as buttons. In the 1870s, that was a lot of money. He also built this house at the outrageous cost of $4,000, which is what we spend on our bicycles in Boulder these days. Well, Will was good at spending money, but not good at making it. By the, uh, where, oh, sorry. Where did Will spend all that money? One of the things he spent it on, you can see, the fence around the property that was built in Pittsburgh, shipped here via train and then stagecoach. It cost $1,500 alone. Inside, Will splurged on some incredible luxuries, hot and cold running water, and Boulder's first ever indoor flush toilet which flushed directly into Boulder Creek. Well, Will was good at spending money, but not at making it. By the 1890s, he's broke. And Daddy wouldn't give him any more money, so Will decides to go to the Yukon, to the gold rush up there. He was sure he'd find gold there and get rich again. But that didn't pan out. So Will died in 1901 in the in Dawson City in the Yukon. In 1910, Eliza Fullen bought this house. She's the widow of Hiram Fullen, a mine owner who has a little park named after him up the street. And Eliza loved to decorate. She lived here into the 18, uh, or 1960s. When she died, her family came to remodel. In some rooms, they peeled 14 layers of wallpaper off the walls. Well, 1990, Historic Boulder bought this house. They put on events and restore buildings. They used it as their offices until 2004. In 2002, well, first of all, going back, forget I said in 2002. In, uh, in, the, later, in the late 90s, uh, Nate, or I'm sorry, Alan Hafer was the executive director of Historic Boulder. And he comes in and they'd had, uh, you know, little weird things, noises and things moving, things like that going out in the house. But one day Alan comes into his office, he opens up his desk drawer and there's a box of bones in his drawer. It says Jack Jack's bones on it. Well, he didn't put it there. So he asks people in the building who put it there. Nobody in the building has seen or knows anything about that box of bones. But he did know an, an archeologist up the street named Jack, which is the kind of people you know when you live in Boulder. So he calls Jack up and uh, says, Jack, I got a box of bones, your bones in my desk here for some reason. And Jack says, what the hell are you talking about? I didn't put bones in your desk. The next morning when Alan comes in to work and opens up his desk drawer, that box of bones has just as mysteriously disappeared. And again, no one in the building has touched it or knows anything about it. And that is the lamest ghost story that I know. Well, in 2002, uh, one day Historic Boulder invited, uh, it was one night actually around Halloween, Historic Boulder invited Boulder Psychic Horizons to come here for a ghost hunting event. And the people at Boulder Psychic Horizons took a picture that night of what appears to be the ghost of a 13-year-old girl at the top of the stairs. The image stayed there all night. They were able to put their hands in the cold spot that it created. And when asked who the girl was, well, according to Boulder Psychic Horizons, and they should know, it was Eliza Fullen who came back to this house that she loved at the time in her life when she was happiest, which apparently you can do if you're a ghost. And it makes perfect sense because everybody knows that nobody's happier than a teenage girl. Now, if you want to see a ghost pretty much for sure, uh, right around Halloween, the people who live here now, they bought the house in 2004, by the way, and we think they like us. When they're outside, they wave to us and they use all their fingers. And around Halloween, they put a dummy in that second floor window over the bay window and light it so it looks like the ghost of a woman looking out on the street. 